Hi there, this is David, and welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Quest XI. Last time, Serena joined our party! Hey, hey, awesome. So, yeah, um, she comes with all the same skills that you had with her before, but she's still as useless as ever, so I don't really care about that. I uh, just figured I'd point that out. As far as her equipment is concerned, I went ahead and I re-equipped her with some stuff. Um, if I use her, I use her. If I don't, it doesn't really matter. I really didn't use her all that much before anyway. Um, as far as the papillion masks, they're actually halfway decent. Um, I went ahead and I kept them on David and Jade. Um, the other two, the happy hat and the Hades helm, is better. So, with that being said, you know what? With Eric, I might want to give him one of those masks, too, now that I think about it. Uh, let's see. Do I have one? Ooh, I do. Whoa! That really helps him out. Uh, well, actually, no, with magical might and mending, actually. I was thinking that that was defense, so, yeah. Um, still with Eric, the Corsair's cap is the way to go. Let's go ahead and check out the item shop before we actually move on with life. Basically, we're still looking for Veronica. Serena said that she's to the north of here, just kind of hanging out. I don't know why she wouldn't come into town, but, um, who knows. So there's a better staff here for Serena, but I don't really care about that. There's some other accessories and things like that. Um, some of these things are better for Serena, um, but I don't care about Serena, so, yeah. Otherwise, all the equipment that we have is better. <clears throat> so, with that being said, let's uh, go ahead and talk to this guy. Okay, she's gotta be there. It's not that big of a grove. Maybe she's possessed or something. Yeah. These are Serena and Veronica's parents. And it's nice to see that they're okay, that they survived the fall. I'm sure she'll be fine. She's one tough cookie. What could possibly have happened to Veronica? I mean, if Serena survived, as useless as she is, Veronica's had to have survived. I don't see anybody here. You think Veronica's really here? If she is, she's keeping a low profile. When we were children, Veronica and I would often come to this grove to play. I was sure she would be waiting for me here. Veronica! Veronica, where are you? Oh. <gasps> ah, there she is! I knew it! <sighs> <laughs> Wake up, lazy bones. You'll catch cold sleeping outside like this. Veronica? Hmm? <gasps> Look, her staff is shining, and so is the mark on your hand. Do you think if you touch it, you might have one of your visions?
Veronica, you gave your life to save us. No! Even in your final moments, you were thinking of your friends. No! Oh, Veronica. <sighs> Why must the good die young? Follow. I have to tell everyone. I have to tell mother and father. So she's dead? Like, she's seriously dead? Or is she just gonna get revived whenever the, um, the priest finds out or something? There's no way they could have killed off a main character. O great and glorious Yggdrasil, whose holy heart is the symbol of all life, today we mourn the loss of a beloved child of Arborea. Though she came into life with another of your hallowed leaves, she departed this realm alone. May she one day return to you and bloom again upon your branches. here today to celebrate the life of my dear sister even in her darkest hour veronica thought not of herself but only of protecting the luminary she was a keeper to the last now i ask that each of you offer up a lock of hair to the sacred flame that its light may guide her on her way back to the world tree My little angel. <laughs> Curse you, Mordigan. Why could you not have taken me instead? My darling, darling daughter. How could you leave us without saying goodbye? Serena appears steadfast despite her grief. But the sight of her poor parents is heartbreaking indeed. My child, I must speak with you and your friends. When you have a moment, please come to the cathedral. Come to the cathedral so you can revive her, hopefully? Them offering up their locks of hair was really, um, sad. It reminded me of something from Dragon Quest VII, actually. You know that fire ritual where they were dropping the uh, torches inside the volcano and all that? Yeah, that scene. Oh. Okay. I mean, I, I hope she's not dead. Then my only black mage is Rab, and his black magic sucks. I mean, there's gotta be somebody better. 
Oh, but poor Serena, too. Forgive me for summoning you here at this time of sadness, but there is something I believe you will be eager to hear. You came in search of the sacred conveyance upon which Erdwin and his allies rode out to face the Dark One, did you not? How did you know that? For some days before your arrival, Holy Yggdrasil granted me another vision. I saw you, honored luminary. You were standing alongside Serena upon a great white object that transported you to an island in the sky. A strange and beautiful place. And you think this was a vision of the future? I do. For in my dream, Veronica was not with you. I had been greatly troubled as to what her absence might mean. I had hoped and prayed that my fears were unfounded, yet... Alas, they were not. Which made me wonder if the conveyance upon which you stood might also be real. And then, I remembered... Cetacea. The legends tell of a divine being who soared through the skies on silver wings. A beast summoned to Erdwin's side by a mystical melody. Perhaps it was upon Cetacea's back that you rode in my vision. And perhaps the island upon which you alighted is the next step on your journey. I intend to scour the annals for indications of how she might be summoned. I will inform you forthwith if my researches should prove fruitful. Now, the day's unhappy events have surely taken their toll. Rooms have been prepared for you all at the inn. Pray, rest a while. Zetasha? Not Ramia? Huh. What's cetacea? It actually sounds like a sea animal, the way that it's spelled, like some sort of marine animal. I don't know. But I, you know, it would be nice to have the capability of flying. I guess we do need to get to Mordigan's castle somehow. Oh. Okay. Well, I guess he could just... You know, spend his time at the library, and we can go to the inn, and wake up, and then we'll have the power of flight. That'll be nice. No Veronica, but we'll have flight. You know what? Maybe in the library we'll find a way to revive Veronica. That'd be pretty cool. Or just use, you know, a Yggdrasil leaf. That always works. This sounds like Serena. She must be really upset. Oh. Really? Huh. Oh wow, so it was all Veronica's doing. Serena just kind of tagged along. And now Veronica's gone. Oh. Yeah. I'm sure she's crushed. I mean, this is just horrible. Hey there, Jade. What's going on? Oh. Oh. Yeah, she was a uh, one tough cookie, but now she's no longer here. Oh. Uh, something tells me that, uh, you'll pop off long before we do. Oh, hey, there's, uh, Silvando. What's going on? Oh. Oh. Yeah, I don't think now, t now is time for your little 
happy pride parade thing. That wouldn't really cheer Serena up, but let's go check on her. It's a love song from the Age of Heroes. The story of a lady pining for her long-lost sweetheart. No one remembers who wrote it, but I've loved it since I was a little girl. You know, something's been bothering me. Veronica? We were born at the same time, so our leaves bloomed at the same time, didn't they? Do you think they'll... fall at the same time, too? Hmm, I don't know. You've always been a bit slow, to be honest. But I hope they do. <laughs> Serena, I want you to promise me something. If anything happens to me, Promise you'll finish this without me. <gasps> I shan't promise anything of the sort. I don't even want to think of such things. If only I had promised to do as she asked. Perhaps she might have been able to make her sacrifice more easily. She was right, you know. I always have been slow when it came to talking or walking or learning magic. I was always a step behind her. But now I must tread my own path, alone. <laughs> I hate to ask, but would you mind awfully not going anywhere for a little while? I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry to be such a bother, but I shan't be one any longer. Veronica died to save me. I must make the most of my life, for her sake. Hmm. No more tears. That was the old me. Goodbye. What in the world? I feel... different. <gasps> Thank you, dear sister. Wow, so she's really dead. I mean, if they transferred her powers back to Serena, then Veronica's really dead. 
she's not going to come back. And I've got to say, not a fan of the new haircut. I don't like it at all. If you're going to have your hair that short, take off the headband. It doesn't make any sense. I don't like it. And it looks like it's like so close to her scalp, it's like gelled in there or something. I'm really not a fan of this new do. It's just... It doesn't fit her. It's ugly. And... Yeah, I know that cutting off your hair is a symbol is it's symbolic of, you know, leaving your old past behind, blah 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 blah. I would be more affected by it if I didn't see it in Wild Arms when Cecilia did it, or Final Fantasy IX when Garnet did it. But eh, it's cool to see it here too, I guess. Oh Yeah, it was. That was nice. Were there any other RPGs where where a woman cut off her hair? I can really only think of Wild Arms and Final Fantasy IX. I wonder if there were others. I don't know, it seems to be a recurring theme here in these JRPGs, though. Well, a new day's dawned, everything seems fine. Hey there, Serena. Good morning! Or should I say good afternoon? The sun's already high in the sky. Father Benedictus dropped by earlier. He says he has something to show us at the top of the mountain. Everyone else has gone on ahead. But I thought I'd wait for you. Shall we go and join them? There's a little door to the right of the cathedral. The path is through there. Um, okay, I guess. I wonder what he wants to show us. I wonder if he found anything. Um, he was saying that he was going to scour the library for some sort of flying contraption. So, maybe he was able to, you know, find that? Huh. Hey there. Oh. Okay. I mean, I hope he did. That'd be really cool to uh, fly this Cetacea thing. I wish it was Ramia, but I'll take Cetacea. It's fine. Did we go up here the first time? I don't think that we did. I think this is the first time we've ever really been up here. Oh, the whole rest of the party's here, too. Ah, there you are. So glad you could finally join us. Yggdrasil blessed me with another vision in the night. I saw Veronica standing upon this very ledge. It is known as Luminary's Landing. When Erdwin descended from the heavens after facing the Dark One, this is where he alighted. And this is the Calamus Flute. In my dream, Veronica played upon it. It once belonged to the great sage, Serenica. She left it in Arborea on her final visit, the day after the Dark One finally fell. I gave it to Veronica as a memento of her heroic ancestor. And yet, when I awoke this morning, there it was, upon my pillow. It is a sign. The flute will reveal the path you must tread. Serena, my child, if you would be so kind. Of course. be doing it wrong but if Veronica was playing it in Father Benedictus's vision it must be the key can you try perhaps What the? Uh, 
fishing rod? I fear it is I who am seeing visions. You got a bite! Oh, go on, darling! Reel it in! as I suspected. It was upon her back that you rode in my dream. The sacred conveyance of the luminary, Cetacea. It seems that she heeds the call of the flute. You must play it whenever you require her aid. Go, luminary, and seek out the floating island. It is the World Tree's will. Whatever awaits you there will surely aid you in the fight against the Lord of Shadows. Do not let Veronica's sacrifice be in vain. Now, play. Now we have the power of flight, and we can fly around the world and uh, go to different places. But where am I going to go first? Find out next time on Let's Play Dragon Quest XI. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.